Hey there everyone, Hitesh here back again with another video. In this video, I want to talk about how you can use your existing web development skills and can produce native iOS and Android app using those skills. And yes, it's completely possible to utilize your HTML, CSS and JavaScript skills and can design native Android and iOS app. And again, I'm not talking about the hybrid apps or just a wrapper in a website, it's native apps. Now first and foremost, before we get started and talk in this video about the tech, let me just be clear that in this video, we are going to talk about the React Native. Now there are a lot of other players in the market that can produce native Android and iOS app using your web development skill, but it's not possible to talk all of them about all of them in just one video. So we're gonna take a lot of videos in covering all of them up. In the first one, we are getting started with the React Native. Now first and foremost, let's be clear here that I'm not talking about the hybrid apps or the web apps that are being wrapped around in a browser or something like that. It's not, it's a complete and pure native apps that you design in iOS using Swift or in Android using Java or Kotlin. They are pure apps and they are completely being designed using the web skills that is HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And obviously the very first question is what is React Native? And in order to understand the React Native, I have to touch up a little bit on the React as well. Now in case you are not aware with the project React, it is a project being designed by Facebook. And in case you are not aware and still don't believe me that these apps can be really awesome, just take out your phone and have a look on the apps like Facebook, your messenger of the Facebook and Instagram. They are completely being designed and are almost uh, switched into the React Native. Again, coming back to our question, what is React and React Native? So Facebook recently was facing a lot of problems about redesigning their apps and everything. And basically what I believe the problem was handling a lot of users as well as to just roll out new features as well. Now just on to a side note, just try to imagine if I give you a small chunk of the Facebook app, which is humongous, which is very big, and you have to just recompile that app, hit just uh, control B or command B, just rebuild that app, it's gonna take a lot of time. You can have probably a coffee or can have a nap and still that is that app is going to be compiled. So Facebook needed something more robust, more fast that can handle a lot of traffic as well as can be designed really quickly. And the team at the Facebook got started by designing a new completely fresh project which is React. Now, the good part about the React is its virtual DOM and we are not going to go into the much more technical details about the virtual DOM and everything, maybe in later on videos, but all you need to understand that it's really fast and uh, although it's a library, but it's kind of a very lightweight component that can be injected anywhere. You can use React with PHP, with MySQL, with Firebase, with MongoDB, or maybe any other kind of database that you are using. It's really awesome and everybody is liking it in the community. And now comes up the point that, hey, this is React and that is used for designing web applications. So what it has to do with the React Native? Now the successor or so-called successor of the React is React Native. Now all the things that you learn in the React, like components, props, states, and other things, are used in the React Native as well. Now I will later on go in the inside details how the React Native works, what are the native APIs and everything, but right now all you need to understand is all the things that you're gonna learn in the React can be applied in React Native and it's almost same workflow. Those components, props and states are all being used in the React Native and thus you got your native application. And the best part about the React Native is two. First of all, you don't ever compile your app. You just hit a reload just like in your website and that's it, you are done making your app. And the second part is you don't have to maintain two separate code base for your application. For example, let's just say I have an application and I have to launch two separate versions of it, obviously in an iOS version and an Android version. It requires two teams to be out there because simply one team is going to maintain Android application and one team is going to maintain iOS application. And on to the side note, if you are not aware of that, Implying the same exact feature in iOS Android does require a lot of combination of those teams, a lot of talks in between them. But in the React Native, you just have to maintain one single code and that code will produce native Android app as well as iOS app. 
So it's one of the many new projects that are around and uh, there are a lot of other players in the market like Ionic and maybe we'll talk about them later on in some videos. Right now let's just keep our focus on React and React Native. So React Native is getting a lot of attention nowadays and people are loving how the things are shaping for the React Native and the community is growing. Okay, so now that you understand what is React and React Native, I know many of you are jumping from the couch and saying, hey, finally I can use my web development skills and can design native Android and iOS app using those skills. No need to learn Java, Kotlin or Swift. And you might be thinking, how can I get started in that? Now, before you ask this question, let me be clear. In order to get started with React and React Native, I have two approaches here. First of all, this is unavoidable. You need to be really, really good in HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and a little bit on the Flexbox. And the good news about that is that Flexbox series is already out uh, freely on my YouTube channel. You can have a look on there. It's really helping there. But before we jump on there, your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript skills are the essential. You cannot skip that. And it's not a vanilla JavaScript skills. You need to require a little bit more than that. And simply saying the ES6 version, the latest syntax of the ES6 is required and there is no skip for that. Once you are comfortable with the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript part, then comes the second approach. And it's completely on you how you want to get started. I recommend all the people to get started with React first because all the skills that you learn in the React, again, the components, props, and states, and everything, is going to be helpful in React Native as well. But it is not compulsion. A lot of people directly jump into React Native and learn all the concepts just right there, and it's completely okay as well. But if you already are having skills of React, it's really helpful, and all those persons who are having React skills can probably in a week or two weeks, can start building basic app in React Native. Again, a big, big, big sidebar here. All those people who are enrolled in my React JS course at Learn Code Online, I have just released out three big sections on React Native, and it's a free update for all the Learn Code Online users to enjoy in the React course, and they will be learning the React just like usually they were doing in that course. And I will also be demonstrating uh, how you can build up native application using React Native as well. Again, this is not at all a full-fledged course on React Native that has been included, but it's really good enough to get you started and quickly up and running. Now, I know as soon as I'll be uploading this video on YouTube, people will be saying, hey, this means that the native apps are going somewhere or people will not be learning the native apps like Swift, Java, and Kotlin are going somewhere. No, it's not like that. Try to assume it like that, that if the Node.js is coming in the market, does it mean that the PHP is going somewhere? No, not at all. There are always side-by-side -side technologies and for some business, this is good. For some business, that is good. For example, there are still apps that are being designed in Ruby on Rails as well as on Django, as well as on PHP and Node.js. So it's always good to have a lot of options and it's technology. It's going to be wide variety and it's going to be changing all the time. So. There are options now in front of you. You can go with the Android development using Java as well, or maybe Kotlin as well. And you can go similarly for the iOS development using Swift as well. But now you have more options. Simply saying you don't want to learn those languages like Swift or Java or Kotlin. You can directly get started with React Native and enjoy your, all of your skills of JavaScript, HTML, and CSS and build native apps. So whole story short, none of the technology is going anywhere. But luckily, we have now more options. And it's going to be a lot of business who is going to say that, hey, for my business, the React Native is awesome. And some are going to say that, hey, for my business, hybrid apps are awesome. For some business, it's going to say, hey, I need just Java application in Android. So a lot of technologies are going to come up. That means a lot of more options, a lot of new job opportunities. And it's all win-win situation for everybody. Now, I see a lot of good future in the React and React Native and other such technologies that are coming up around. And I always keep an eye on those things which are just around in the market. And React has produced really some good results. And even I have tried to compare some of the React Native apps with the actual native apps being designed in the Swift. And they all are performing really absolutely fine. So on to a just quick sidebar. If you haven't talked or haven't looked at the React JS course, go ahead, check that out. It now includes the React Native course as well. Not a full-fledged course, but enough to get you started. Link is in the description section so that you can have a look. Now, all those people who want to think that, hey, I'm gonna just directly look it on my own, you are welcome as well. I'll leave down a link in the description as well as on the screen as well 
for the direct documentation of React Native as well. I highly recommend all of you to at least check out the documentation of React Native and be aware what is happening currently in the world of technology. I hope you have enjoyed this video and maybe in later some of the videos where we just use the screencast and everything, I'll try to make a simple basic app in React Native in front of you so that you can get much more idea how the things are working. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Okay, I get that. You are new on this channel and probably are thinking, hey, what is going on at this channel? In this channel, we talk about programming, mostly websites, mobile app, and what is happening latest and current in the programming tech world. So I know you are new. So why don't you join us by hitting that subscribe button? Yes, the red one. And join us in the amazing community of programmers here. Do hit that subscribe button, do hit that like button, and I'll surely catch you up in the next video.